Before we get started, you know DomainTools.com, right? I can type whois.sc slash domain name really fast, and I do it daily, but until recently, I didn't know how powerful their other tools were. If I want a domain name, I can set a free alert to notify me when it changes status. If it goes to auction, I can use their sales history tool to find comps and determine my maximum bid. After I buy it and develop the domain into a business, I can set up alerts for any domains registered that contain my trademark, and I can set up registrant alerts of all my competitors so I can keep an eye on what domains they're buying and know what they're up to before they make any announcements. DomainTools.com needs to be in your toolbox like it is in mine. Go sign up for an account today on DomainTools.com. It's free. My second sponsor is David E. Westlow at Wiley Rhine. Imagine having a legal issue like a UDRP or a cease and desist. Imagine having to get an agreement put together quickly for buying or selling a domain name. And imagine going to your family lawyer who just doesn't get it or one of the expensive law firms in your city who are going to charge you thousands of dollars. Then imagine going to David E. Westlow who will understand your domain name portfolio and your intellectual property assets, understand the domain name environment, and be able to help you out quickly. David E. Westlow. I trust him and I suggest you give him a call. The first initial consultation is free. Finally, did the Panda updates kill your organic search engine rankings on Google? Are you now on page two or worse, receiving a fraction of the traffic you used to? It's time to visit page2sucks.com. You heard me right, page2sucks.com. It's a Q&A site like Quora or Stack Overflow, but it's focused on helping you get to the page one of the organic search results. Go check out Page 2 Sucks, post a question, and get the answers you're looking for quickly. Here's your program. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the domain name authority and the place where you can learn how to become a successful domain name entrepreneur directly from the experts themselves. Take the most premium geographic domain names like palmsprings.com, nashville.com, and acapulco.com. Mix them with the most premium generic brandable domains like whiskey.com, golfclub.com, and traveler.com. Build them out with a ton of great content, sell advertising across all of them, and you have CCIN, the Costello Cities Internet Network, founded in 1995. Joining us today to talk about some of his biggest successes to date and how you can do the same thing today is the founder and CEO, Michael Costello. Michael, welcome to the show. How you doing, Michael? Great. It's great to have you. Thank you. Michael, I'd like to start off the show with a little background on the guest. Can you tell us how many domain names CCIN currently owns and in what TLDs they break out? Uh, they're all mostly, I'd say 99.9% of .coms. Um, 1,500. You know, we have a small portfolio, but we have a rather large, I would say, premium uh, list of domain names, NGOs. Mm -hmm. So for the most part... Uh, we started back in, I actually started back in 1994. And uh, that's, you know, it, if there's something that reaches out to me that, that maybe I would have a passion about, I try to register it or David tries to register. For the, but for the most part, we accumulated most of our sites probably 95, 96, 97. So for the most part, you're done registering and buying domain names. The ones you have are the ones you're focused on. Is that fair to say? Well, um, we did happen to pick up Papua New Guinea about a year ago. It's you know it's kind of sitting there. It's one of those things where it's like you know what we don't have a uh, a country. Yeah. Papua New Guinea popped up and we bought it. But for the most part, we have uh, pretty much settled on. We've got a lot of names that really we want to develop um, that are sitting there, and that kind of uh, for us is something we don't want to do. We really want to develop out these names. Right. Okay. So that's what your focus is. Yes. Um, and I read that you first started collecting domain names in 1994. Uh, back in those days, the registrations were free, which meant that they were worthless to most people. That's right. That's <laughs> but right. not you. Exactly. So do you remember the first few domain names that you registered? Yeah, I remember there were, there were five in particular. Um, but I would just say uh, Berlin, I did register. It was taken from me. Oh. Actually, hacked for me in, uh, about three months later. Uh, there wasn't a lot of recourse back then, but no big deal. I'm not complaining. Palmsprings.com, whiskey.com. Dot com, 
um, powwow.com, which was actually the name of my production company in music back then, and one other name, which was Mattel.com, and we can go into that later. <laughs> my wife actually worked for Mattel, and it was something that I felt uh, would be good for her with the company, but that turned out to be something different later, and we ended up just giving it to, to Mattel. Okay. All right. And um, uh, before we get into exactly how uh, you built out uh, some of your properties that you, that you just mentioned you've owned for, uh, you know... Uh, 15 long time. plus, yeah, long time. Yeah. Um, can you put CCIN into perspective for our audience across the entire network? How many unique visitors do you reach and how many page views do you display? Well, that, that's a lot of information to come out with. I would just say that, uh, you know, our sites, uh, as I had mentioned, um, are qualitative traffic. Uh, we don't really use gimmicks in getting uh, traffic numbers up. Our numbers are Simply, if 8,000 people are coming to daycare.com, those 8,000 people are there for daycare. Same thing with Palm Springs. We're about in the same numbers, anywhere up to 10,000 a day in Palm Springs. Uh, page views, I really couldn't tell you. It, obviously, in the millions. Um, National.com is doing very well. As an overall, I can't really tell you. I would say millions of visitors uh, per month. Uh, we would say that we're like the geos. If you're doing 250,000 uh, qualitative hits a month, that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, just one more question to put the, the uh, network into perspective for our audience because you've mentioned some fantastic domain names like palmsprings.com and whiskey.com. Do you feel comfortable talking about the revenue of uh, the Costello City's internet network as a whole? Well, we – and and this is uh, – one thing I have to state is that when – you know, when I say that we're making so much money – it's actually money that goes into our pockets. We really have very little overhead, uh, which is very, very important about the way we structure our company. But I'll tell you, we make at least a million dollars a year and no less than 10, uh, I'm sorry, no more than 10 million a year. Okay, great. That's a yeah. great ballpark that I think uh, a lot of entrepreneurs would love to be in that situation. Yeah. So let's, um, uh, so we're going to find out how you built a virtual real estate empire from your first free domain name registration to today. And we'll okay. spend some time digging into one of your major brands so the audience can understand how you did it and then reproduced it on your other brands to build right. what you have today. All right. So let's jump right into this. From my okay. research, it appears your success formula is to, one, buy the industry-defining domain name in the .com TLD, two, develop a website with tens of thousands of web pages in some cases, and three, sell advertising to potentially every single business in the, in the city or the niche. How did I do summarizing your business model? You know, every, all of that was, it was fairly good. I think the last one um, is a little broad. We actually go for the low-hanging fruit. As I was saying earlier, we're a small company. So we want uh, a lot of return when we go out and get an advertiser, let's say for palmsprings.com. If, uh, if they buy one of the spots on the front page, it's uh, as... It says uh, much as fifteen hundred a month, even more. We actually have some that pay six thousand a month. Those that have exclusivities on some of the bigger low hanging fruit, let's say real estate, mm -hmm. would be a, would be a big one. So um, this, the lower hanging fruit that is another area. Uh, the uh, let's say the the smaller businesses, let's say the hundred dollars a month uh, listings. That's something we are just touching on, but we have a feeling this is something Dave and I are, are, have been speaking a lot about the last year that. Uh, that is something we may bring in other parties to deal with. Again, one thing about David and I is that we want this to be fun. We don't want to be caught up in you know a nine to five or you know a lot of, a lot of time putting into it. We we want to have a, a you know a lifespan here of, of 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 you know of enjoyability. So for the most part, the reason why we've been in it this long is because we've gone out there, we've got that low hanging fruit, and we've enjoyed kind of the fruits of that labor. Okay, and just to back up for our audience. Michael, you are the uh, CEO of CCIN, and your brother David is the um, COO. COO, and also right. uh, leads uh, the editorial across the the network. Right. That's okay. Right. Um, and we're going to be interviewing David in a follow up interview, uh, who is currently in the process of moving out to Nashville. Yeah, I think he's just arriving. Just arriving now. He, he actually uh, took a a van, a trailer, and uh, hauled some stuff out, and he, I think he just got there today. Wow. So he's moving to Nashville. Of course, you own Nashville.com. You right. are currently, uh, as we uh, talk, you are in what city? I'm in Moore Park. I'm up near Santa Barbara. Okay. So we have offices in Palm Springs, Laguna Beach, West Palm Beach, and now 
we're probably going to move the, the, the headquarters to Nashville. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to get into that. Um, all right. Are there any other parts of the puzzle that I missed in terms of uh, building, out, uh, building out your business model? Well, there, there, it's, it's, it, you know, in the 15 years we've been doing this, there's a lot that can be talked about. Um, you've hit on most of it. I okay. would say that it's very, very important to have, especially in a saturated market like we have now, that you have unique content. And what I mean by unique content, a lot of times people say, oh, the most amount I can get on a, you know, on a click-through, the most amount I can get on this is by using this topic. This, uh, this topic uh, is very high on the Google search list. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, originally with, with PalmSprings.com, I had put up the Star Walk. And the Star Walk is basically like in Hollywood, you have a Star Walk. Mm -hmm. In Palm Springs, they have a Star Walk. And it has all the names, Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, all the names that are out there. I took the time back in 95 to actually go out there and create a page for each one. And most people would say, that's a lot of work. Why would you do that? And, and really, I mean, it's just you're taking kind of a, a snapshot of what the, the star says and, and, you know, big deal. Well, I found that a lot of people came when they were searching on back then. What was it? They may be Yahoo or uh, InfoSeek. There, I forget what the search engines may have been in 95, 96, 97. Alta Vista. Alta Vista, there you go. Um, that pe when people searched... Uh, Frank Sinatra, they were finding PalmSprings.com. Why were they finding PalmSprings.com? Well, obviously everybody knows that's where he lived, but there's a lot of those stars' names that actually would come up in searches. And people would say, you know, Palm Springs looks beautiful. When we're out in L.A., let's take a drive out to Palm Springs. So there's a lot of secondary movement of getting traffic to your site. If you just go with blinders on towards that one area, everybody else is doing it. Right. It's a saturated market. You've right. got to use different techniques to build up a unique site of content in the long run it'll pay big dividends yeah okay and we're going to dig into that content a little bit more because in my research i found some pretty phenomenal things um so david your brother coo once said if you have the money purchase the best domain name you can get your hands on but remember the golden rule a domain name is only worth what you can do with it we've turned down five million dollar offer for palmsprings.com and didn't think twice about it because we've monetized it so well in your opinion, is the domain name one of the most critical foundations to build a business on? Well, for us it is, and I believe it should be for anyone that has a global approach in their business. You know, and again, even a local approach in your business, that one name can define a lot of uh, future revenue and also cut down your competitive state later on. Um, for us, it's always – we have – well, let's say daycare.com, mm -hmm. people that actually come and scrape our database. Now, our database is that are people that actually come and have signed up mm -hmm. since back in 97. They'll come and they'll scrape the information off. In the long run, when you think about it, they, don't, they can't get the brand. And the brand is what brings in that traffic every day, new traffic every day. Right. So for us, uh, that name is, is premium. When you think about, when we were talking about popsprings.com, the kind of revenue that it does make. Um, you know, day after day, you know, week after week, year after year, that revenue comes in. And I truly believe it's because of the trust factor people place now in a name. I mean, if you're going to go to Ford, Ford.com, Mattel, Mattel.com, Palm Springs, Palm Springs.com, Nashville, Nashville.com, it just has that uh, trustability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go to a grocery store and you see, you know, the shelves are, st uh, are piled with, uh, you know, 25, 30, 50 different cereal brands, you're more than likely, I mean, you're going to look at a brand that you've seen on TV, something that you've trusted. And in a lot of ways, that's really what we get inherently in those domain names, mm -hmm. is that trust factor. Now, what is that worth? Especially on a global scale. That's worth so much. So it all starts and ends with us with the, uh, with the domain name. Hopefully, it's a name that is something you have a passion in, mm -hmm. something you would enjoy doing every day. And uh, I really believe it all revolves around the premium domain name, the category killer name. Yeah. Okay. So I want to dig into palmsprings.com as an example throughout this interview uh, for, for other...